or welcome to this lesson. So this is our introduction to sewing lesson. This is the lesson where we're going to be teaching you your sewing machine. We're going to be showing you the parts of your sewing machine, the uses, how to maintain your sewing machine. And we're also going to show you how to set up your sewing machine and start threading, all right, and start sewing with your sewing machine. So get your pen and paper, get full concentration, and you're going to get right into it. So first off, this is an electric machine. It works with light. If you don't have light in your area, you may want to go for the other manual machine, which I'm going to drop. You're going to check out our second video on sewing machine parts. So you want to turn on your machine. This is our butterfly tabletop domestic machine. It's great for sewing any project, okay? So the first part of our machine you're going to be looking at is our spool pin. The main function of the spool pin is to hold the thread, to hold the spoon, the spool of thread. Okay, that is what it does. This other part is the bobbin binder wire uh, spindle, bobbin winder spindle. All right, that's where the bobbin goes in if you want to wind your bobbin. All right, during winding, the bubble is the bobbin is placed there. All right, that's where you wind your thread. Okay, just like I'm doing so. You place your bobbin there in the winder spindle. You push it towards the bobbin winder stopper. Okay. This is the pedal. These are all right. Once it is being pressed, that is what happens to the bobbin. It winds the thread. Okay, onto the uh, onto the the, the the bobbin winder spindle winds the thread onto the bobbin. That is our tension digs over there because I don't want the thread being wind to be loose. Okay, so it helps gives it a, it helps in winding the thread very tightly and uh, it won't come loose. Okay, it will not have, it won't give you loose stitch because if you don't wind your bobbin well, you may end up with loose stitch. So this is how you press this, the pedal. We have finished winding our thread and you're going to that is this one this other part is a shuttle that's where the bobbin goes in that is our shuttle where the bobbin goes in you want to turn it into that little space you see there push it inwards and you'll hear a clicking sound if it is properly properly placed it should be able to stand like this without falling out so right now we are going to be trading our machine so you can get to understand all these parts as we go that is our tension dicks don't forget to always pass your thread through the tension dicks don't forget to always pass your thread through the tension i want to give you a closer look so you can know what it looks like passing it through the trader guide the trade guide okay i want to pass it through the trade guide take it up and this is the hand wheel they're seeing me holding right now i'm turning the one hand wheel so i can lift this uh a trade tech cup lever all right the bobby winder helps in lifting our trade tech cup lever so we can pass our thread through the tech cup lever down to the needle all right down to a needle So right now this is a, a hand wheel and this other one is used for selecting stitches all right it's used for selecting the stitch we want to use in sewing as you know this sewing machine has different types of stitches you can see our zigzag stitch all right and our buttonhole stitch so you can use this i recommend this machine if you want to do a lot of designs okay can see butterfly jh 890s all right it's also a stitch length that you can use it to select the 
the kind the length of stitch you want to use all right you can use it to, it can be used to control the length of the stitch all right so this is our hand wheel. we are making use of a hand wheel right now we are using a hand wheel to control our needle all right take it up or bring it down so for you to be able to put your thread you need to take it up all right that is the eye of our needle which we are going to be passing our thread through <laughs> passing our thread through our needle now this is the time we are going to be fixing our bobbin our shuttle in place okay that is where our bobbin goes into all right we are putting our bob our shuttle right in into our bobbin case our shuttle case now it is time for us to bring out the but the bobbin the bobbin thread are up you can see what i just did i held the thread from the needle pulling turning my hand wheel for to take it in and to bring it bring the thread from the bottom right out and now this is another this is our uh so this particular lever is used to drop our presser foot down and also to take it up okay this particular one is used to cut our uh, excess thread if you finish sewing you can if you're not close to your scissors you can just use it to cut the thread so right now you're going to be talking about our presser foot this is what it looks like That's what our presser's foot looks like. Presser foot holds the fabric in its definite place, all right? It holds the fabric down so it doesn't move while you're sewing, okay? So that is just its function. It holds the fabric down. During sewing, the, the, the feed dog pulls the fabric forward. The feed dog is underneath where you see us putting that uh, our shuttle and our bobbin okay so the feed block pulls the fabric while you're sewing the presser foot holds the fabric down okay it keeps the fabric in place in its definite place while the feed dog pulls the fabric when you are sewing okay so the feed dog is underneath this presser foot okay it is underneath the presser foot you can't really see it's it's under right so now we're going to be talking about a reverse stitch lever all right as the name implies the machine will sew in the reverse while the lever is pushed all right when you push it down the machine sews on the reverse all right so you're going to test with this fabric so you can understand well what its function is okay now the machine is sewing all right but when you press this lever down did you see it's going on the reverse side and when it does that it's locking the stitch okay so it doesn't pull off all right okay so that is just its function so now it's time for us to sew you will need your ruler your tape your scissors and of course your tailor's chalk okay so as beginners this is your first project i would love you to do it and for submission rule out a straight line Roll out a straight line in a white fabric, okay, so I can see what you're doing. Roll out a straight line. This will help you to have a straight stitch, okay, for your hand, your hand to be straight while sewing. You're also going to sew on a triangle, so you can master how to what to do in corners, okay. So do just I would just do the same thing I've done now and let's start sewing our presser foot is up okay now press it down with that lever behind and start you're using our 
medium stitch okay to sew not the gather stitch which is the largest the longest stitch all right so let's start sewing make sure you follow the lines all right make sure you follow the line the line you draw make sure you keep your hands straight okay you may not get it this first attempt but once you continue practicing you will be perfect all right you will be good now i'm cutting my thread look at this is what our straight line looks like so please practice okay practice 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 before you know it you'll be perfect all right so now it's time for us to sew our triangle okay it's time for us to sew our triangle you want to take it slow and steady There is no need to rush, okay? You will get it at the end of the day. When you get to that corner, you want to turn your fabric just like I did, okay? When you get to the end of the first tail of the uh, the first uh, tail of the triangle, you want to turn your fabric. That is just how to sew, all right? That's how to sew on corners. Because in you have sewing projects where you need to sew on corners so you need to know exactly what to do all right so you can do this for a triangle you can also draw a set a square you can also draw a circle all right and practice okay practice 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 before you know it you'll be a professional right so this is what our triangle looks like and we've come to the end of this lesson see you in the part two